my dear buddies welcome back <laughs> well today we are going to talk about remaining cool <laughs> well many people ask me vikas which is the best engine coolant for a motorcycle and they ask me is there a coolant which we can put into our motorcycle after replacing the stock coolant and can it keep your motorcycle engine really cool because many of the newer motorcycles heat up quite a bit because of our city traffic so many people asked me that i have heard that engine ice coolant or a few other coolants if we use them then our motorcycle engine can really remain cool so is this really a fact that is a myth that i want to talk about so before we go ahead with this video we have to understand how does a motorcycle cooling system work the engine cooling system okay first before that understand what are the three cooling systems available for a motorcycle one is an air cooled something like this royal enfield here all right so this one doesn't have anything attached to the engine to cool it when the motorcycle moves air flow just gets on to the engine here and these are known as cooling fins so these are designed to trap air inside and cool the engine from outside externally okay so this is basically a no nonsense simple air cooled system and there is nothing in the cooling system which can fail because it doesn't really have a cooling system okay but the biggest drawback with this is that in uh, situations like a very very hot summer day the air also is pretty hot so when the hot air touches the engine it's not really cooling the engine down as well as we need it to and especially in traffic situations where we get stuck in traffic that time there is no air flow onto the engine so that is when air cooled engines heat up quite a bit the next one is an oil cooled engine okay oil cooled is basically an air cooled engine which is similar like this it would still have cooling fins okay like these but there would be a small radiator here okay you would see the same thing is there on the uh twins the 650 twins of the royal enfield it would be a small radiator here and what that does is the engine oil from the sump goes into the radiator in an oil cooled engine there would be a higher amount of engine oil poured for example if your engine which is air cooled if it requires 1 liter of engine oil an oil cooled engine would require about 1 and 1/2 liter or sometimes even 2 liters of engine oil the reason is that from the oil sump the oil would go into the uh, oil cooler here and air gets blown on to the oil cooler and then the oil temperature is reduced quite a bit and then from the other side the oil would go back into the engine okay so you what you're doing here is basically reducing the oil temperature and the same oil would be touching the engine from inside so it would kind of cool down the engine temperature but on an oil cooled engine there is no fan there is no radiator fan so an oil cooled engine is also completely dependent on the air which is getting blasted when you're riding a motorcycle so an oil cooled engine is also not very efficient when you are stuck in traffic but it is still very reliable uh because this is what i'll talk about now next in the next situation okay so we found a oil cooled motorcycle my neighbor has it so take a look at it all right the same thing which i explained on the enfield you can find it here so this is an oil cooled engine okay these are the hoses for the oil to enter the sump and come out of it all right and uh, the radiator you would see here 
there's a small radiator here this is the oil cooler so this FZ250 is an oil cooled engine it doesn't have a radiator fan nor a big radiator which has coolant inside okay I hope you got the idea of an oil cooled engine we will talk about the most complicated and yet the most efficient cooling system of all that is a liquid cooling system with a radiator fan that is what we have on most of the high performance motorcycles like the RC390 now RC390 has a huge radiator here okay if you guys can see it it's right here you can see it much better on the Duke 390 so this is the radiator now here would be the coolant all right this is where the engine coolant is if you guys can see this yeah this is where the engine coolant is okay now how does this system work basically you are pouring coolant which is also known as antifreeze okay earlier days earlier days means like decades and decades ago there was no actual coolant there was only water distilled water that was being used into cars because those days liquid cooled motorcycles were probably not there so they used to put distilled water into car radiator and that used to cool down the engine but in a situation where you live in a very cold region where the temperatures can go down to minus three four or five degrees celsius then in the morning when you wake up and go to your car then the distilled water inside would freeze so when you crank up the engine it is not a good thing because there would be an impeller which actually uh, circulates the coolant and that would just break because the distilled water inside is frozen all right so that is the reason coolant was invented now the best part about coolant coolant same coolant would be used in a car and the same coolant would be used on a motorcycle also because the cooling systems are very similar all right so coolant the best part about a coolant is that it doesn't freeze i think up to probably minus 15 degrees 20 30 degrees depends on cool company to company but it has a very very low cooling point and also issue with distilled water was it can also boil very easily okay it used to boil and expand a lot so that's not a good thing because the uh, the once it starts boiling its cooling efficiency is gone down it can't really cool down the engine well and also when it expands after boiling it is creating unnecessary excess pressure onto the hoses okay hoses are the pipes which circulate the coolant and they can crack with pressure so with coolant it doesn't boil so easily its boiling temperature is also very very high and it doesn't expand much so these are the benefits with a coolant all right so how does the system work this is called a reservoir okay this is where you pour uh, coolant from in some motorcycles you pour from here and in some motorcycles you directly pour from here that is the radiator cap you see the radiator cap here all right I mean you can check it on other motorcycles it's kind of difficult to show it on the RC 390 so the radiator has a cap you open up the cap and you pour coolant from there in cars most of the time you pour coolant from the reservoir that is this all right so once you pour coolant into the radiator what happens is that here the coolant goes and circulates around the engine internally all right so if this is the engine coolant actually goes in between the casing and cools the engine block from within so a very efficient system it takes away the heat from the engine block and then that hot coolant from the other side will again go back into the radiator all right if this is the radiator from this side it will go cool the engine internally all right this is in between the, the metal block internally means it doesn't go inside the engine all right so if this is the engine block the metal okay coolant enters this area internally all right so it would be hollow 
and coolant would go and circulate this way and then cool down the engine block from within all right so don't get confused coolant doesn't enter the engine it just enters the engine block the metal because it's hollow it's created that way there are passages and then hot coolant leaves from the other side and enters the radiator again and when it enters the radiator yes even a radiator is dependent on one thing that is air hitting it from outside but a radiator based cooling system which is liquid cooled has an advantage over oil cooled and over air cooled that is this radiator would have a fan sometimes super bikes have two fans okay and in case you're stuck in traffic that that is a time when the air from outside is not hitting the radiator but the fans spin and when fans spin they are kind of doing just about that required job to keep the coolant's temperature a little down so that engine doesn't overheat okay these fans cannot re replace the job of the wind blast which is coming when you're riding the motorcycle but the radiator fans can do about 30% of job when you're stuck in traffic okay but you will still see the temperature of the engine going up on the uh, temperature gauge on your motorcycle so for example on RC390 or a super bike or a sport bike if i'm stuck in traffic for about 15 20 minutes the radiator fans can keep the engine in operational temperature by spinning but if i'm stuck in traffic for half an hour my motorcycle will heat up you will end up getting a high coolant temperature warning okay so nothing can replace the fact that when you're riding a motorcycle at least about 40 50 km an hour that is the time the air blast from the atmosphere hits the radiator and it cools down the coolant inside the radiator and that in return will go and cool down the engine now you have understood i hope you understood the three types of motorcycle cooling systems so now time to talk about the myth that is if you put the so called high performance coolants which claim to be really good at reducing engine temperatures will they really work in bad traffic situations if you are stuck in bad traffic many people say that even the company engine ice and a few others claim that yes they do well to be very honest very 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 marginally you know not much sometimes this marginal level of cooling doesn't really keep your engine in operational temperatures i have had friends who have used engine ice coolant on their dukes on their rcs and as i said if you're stuck in bad traffic the radiator fans can't really do such a big job to get the temperature uh, lower of the coolant and even if you put expensive high performance coolants like the engine ice it will not be able to get the temperature down so much in bad traffic situations so that your uh, engine can remain cool and in optimum temperature all right so it's as simple as that but are they good well there's nothing wrong in putting engine ice coolant it is a good coolant but don't put it into your motorcycle thinking that it's going to make some drastic difference oh, come in so should you spend that extra money and buy those so called high performance coolants which claim to really cool down your engine well i would say i would not do that i would not spend that extra money because on both my duke 390 and the rc 390 i have only had stock coolant which was filled by the company and i'm using it all right i don't care about high performance coolants because i have used my motorcycles on the race track riding them at high rpm constantly and nothing nothing 
went wrong with my engine's cooling temperature. And of course, even in traffic, as I said, you still need the external airflow to make a drastic difference to cool down your engine. All right? So I wouldn't do it. If you want to do it, go ahead and do it. Now, you all might say that Vikas, but cars do a really good job even when they are stuck in traffic, right? You could be driving and if you get stuck in traffic, even for half an hour or even for one hour, you could have your AC running and still your car doesn't really heat up much. It would still be doing a good job. Why is that? But your motorcycle, no matter which coolant you pour in it, no matter which motorcycle it is, if you're stuck in traffic, it really heats up, especially high compression engines like the Duke or the RC390. You know why a car does a better job? Because, number one, the cars are not as high compression as performance-oriented motorcycles. A Duke 390 or an RC390 compression ratio is almost 13 is to 1. That's very, very high compression ratio. All right. A car's compression ratio would be anywhere about 10 is to 1. So, when the mixture of air and fuel is compressed very highly and then there's a bank that happens inside the engine that bank can create a lot of heat so that is what is happening on high performance motorcycles like the rc 390 or the duke 390 so lower compression that amount of heat is not created so that is one reason why cars don't heat up so much and next on a motorcycle the size of the radiator is not very big and the fan is also pretty small. Even if you put two fans, it's still pretty small. Okay. But on a car, the radiator is huge. It can be this big. All right. And the fans inside a car, there are two huge fans that cars have. Sometimes they have one car for smaller, I mean, one fan for smaller cars. But generally, sedans have two huge radiator cooling fans. So, those fans do a much better job in cooling the uh, coolant inside the radiator. Okay, so three points, lesser compression, less heat created. Number two, huge radiator, it can have more coolant inside it. And number three, bigger fans. That is it buddies, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, do let me know. And if you're not subscribed, do subscribe and I'm there on Instagram also. The link is in the description of this video. Bye-bye.